Hi little skeletons, it's Disney Queen Skelly here and welcome to another Fun Facts video. This one is for Fantasia 1940. Now, um, like I said, with all uh, feature length films and the more popular movies and stuff like that, the Fun Facts will be longer. Also, I apologize in advance. Some of the names that are written down for these fun facts are long and Russian or Swedish or whatever, and I have issues pronouncing them. So just give me five seconds and eventually I'll figure it out. So anyways, here are your fun facts for Fantasia 1940. The animator secretly modeled elements of the sorcerer in The Sorcerer's Apprentice on their boss, Walt Disney. The raised eyebrow was regarded as a dead giveaway. They call the character Yen Sid, which is Disney spelled backwards. Even after more than 60 years after its release, Disney still receives complaints from parents claiming the night on Bald Mountain sequence terrified their children. During production, the animators were given no instructions for coloring. Walt Disney instructed them to use any colors they wanted. At first, the only Walt Disney animated feature film that reaches the two-hour mark. Walt Disney himself related the the story of a chance meeting with Leopold Stokowski at Chasen's restaurant. They agreed to have dinner together. As they talked, Disney told his plans to do Sorcerer's Apprentice and other possible projects using classical music with animation. Disney said that he was stunned when Stokowski, then one of the two most famous conductors in the country, the other being Arturo Toscanini, responded by saying, I would like to conduct that for you. It was an offer he couldn't pass up. The filming of the final Ave Maria sequence was plagued by mishaps. To achieve the effect of moving through the scene, several panes of painted glass were used. The whole setup was over 200 feet long and had to be redone three times. The first time, the wrong lens was placed on the camera and the subsequent film, not only film showed not only the artwork but the workers scurrying around it. The second time around, an earthquake struck the studio and the shot was once again scrapped. The next morning, the shot was redone. The film was shipped to the lab, processing courier to the premiere in New York, where it was spliced into the final print with only four hours to spare. The surrealist painter Salvador Dali made some illustrations for the movie, but his ideas were later discarded. Early on, Walt Disney and Leopold Stokowski considered having fragrances dispersed into the theater at certain points in the movie to heighten the experience. Suggestions including Sirius? Sirius? Serious. Seriously. Serious. <laughs> for Claire de Lune, Jasmine for the Waltz of the Flowers segment of the Nutcracker Suite, Incense for Ave Maria, and Gunpowder for the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Disney dropped the idea because of the difficulty of clearing one scent from the theater before uh, spraying in the next one. This is thought to be the first American film to be released with no credits at all shown on screen except for the intermission card. Not even the customary Walt Disney Presents. Other than the film's title, the phrase is Color by Technicolor, copyright 1940 by the Walt Disney Company, certified number 5940, and RCA sound recording are on the one frame. Programs containing the credits were distributed to patrons at the initial showing of the movie in 1940. The data was added to the 1990 50th anniversary edition at the end of the movie and is used in IMDb's credits as though they were in the original movie. The first American film to use stereophonic sound as well as the first and only film to record in Fanta sound. When Igor Stravinsky, 1882-1971, the only featured composer still, a lot, still living in 1940, was contacted about the rights to use the Rite of Spring he offered to compose a completely new piece for Walt Disney. This was not taken and Stravinsky hated Le Leopold Stokowski's reorchestration and reorganization of the piece. The original order of the sections was jumbled and two of them were complete, le completely left out. The primeval earth scene was filmed using a miniature, a mixture of porridge, mud, and other ingredients and was enhanced by animation apart from the orchestra sequences. It is the only live action sequence in the whole film. At 125 minutes in length, this is the longest Disney animated feature. In the Pastoral Symphony segment, there was originally a scene showing stereotyped black assistant centaurs shining the hooves of the white centaurs. The chief of these was Sunflower, who had a very stereotypical look, big red lips, and wild messy hair. It was not until the 1969 re-release that this was thought to be objectionable, and all subsequent releases until 1980 had an abrupt cut at this point. 
Every subsequent release after 1990 includes the scene, but with the section blown up so that it only shows the faces of the white fem female centaurs. The orchestra that appears in the initial segment of the film is not the actual The Philadelphia Orchestra, but rather a collection of local Hollywood musicians and Disney studio employees such as Paul J. Smith and James McDonald. For The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Mickey Mouse was redesigned by Fred Moore to give him a more modern look and eyes with pupils for the first time. By the time the movie was finally released, two years after The Sorcerer's Apprentice was supposed to be finished as a standalone short, four regular Mickey Mouse films, starting with The Pointer 1939 and The promotional short Mickey Surprise Party 1939 had been completed and released using the new Mickey design. Ave Maria is the only piece in the film to feature vocals, all others are strictly instrumental. First appearance of Mickey Mouse in a Disney animated feature film. The images of dinosaurs from the Rite of Passage segment went on to inspire the primeval world diorama following the Grave, Grave, Grand, Grave Canyon, no, the Grand Canyon diorama on the Disneyland Railroad. The 2000 restoration was the first time the longer so-called roadshow version of the film was seen after the initial release. This version contains much longer interstitials from Deems Taylor explaining what will be seen. The picture of these segments was easy to find and was cleaned up since most of them were reused in the 1990 restoration. But the soundtrack for the segments that had not been seen since the 1940s either could not be found or was in terrible shape. After much debate, Actor Corey Burton was called in to dub all of Taylor's dialogue, but the original narration can be heard in the soundtrack sequence halfway through the picture. This is Steven Spielberg and David O. Selznick's favorite animated motion picture of all time. The initial wide release was a dismal box office failure. In later years, some theater chains, which would normally run any Disney release, would not book the reissue of this film. However, by the 1969 reissue of the film attracted considerable interest for its supposedly psychedelic imagery and Disney marketed the film accordingly to take advantage of it. The reissue was successful and the film's reputation and popular appeal grew from that point to where it is its first home video release in 1991 broke records for sales. The Night on Bald Mountain sequence was cut from the film when originally released on video when this on video. When the sequence was shown in 1940, the studio was overrun with calls and letters from parents who complained that the sequence scared their children and it, it, it has since been restored to its original place in the film on subsequent home video releases. Bella Lugosi served as a live-action model for Chernabog, the demon named after the god of evil in Slavonic mythology in Night on Bald Mountain. Lugosi spent several days at the Disney Studios where he was filmed doing evil demon-like poses for the animators to use as a reference. However, Bill Titlow, the animators in charge of Chernabog, was dissatisfied with Lugosi's performance and, sub and sequence director Wilfred Jackson posed for the cameras. Thus, it was Jackson, not Lugosi, who appeared on screen as Chernabog. Titla supervised the animation of both him and the sorcerer in The Sorcerer's Apprentice, whose name Yen Sid, Disney spelled backwards, was originally going to be used for Chernabog. The animators modeled Sorcerer after Nigel de Brulier, but secretly added in some elements of their boss, Walt Disney. The raised eyebrow was regarded as a dead giveaway. Walt Disney originally wanted to re-release the film each year with new music segments, but this proved overambitious. Among the pieces that were at least story were at least storyboard for insertion were Jean Sibelius, Swan of Tuanella, Richard Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries, Nikolai Nikolai? I guess it was Nikolai. Nikolai Rimsky, Korsakov's Flight of the Bumblebee, and Carl Maria von Weber's Invitation of to the Waltz. A new concept that would have starred Peter Pegasus from the pastoral segment. Some of the other originally unused ideas were later incorporated into Fantas Fantasia 2000, 1999. Character actress Ruby Dan Dandridge served as the live-action reference model for the for Hyacinth Hippo in the Dance of the Hour sequence. At the beginning of the Chinese dance segment of the Nutcracker Suite, Hop Low, the little mushroom, does a little jump while crisscrossing his legs. Animator Art Babbitt got the idea from the Three Stooges. It's one of Curly Howard's signature moves.
Disney digitally re-recorded the soundtrack for the 1982 re-release because of the original Leopold Stokowski soundtrack from 1940s sounded dated and very limited in fidelity. However, for the 1990 50th anniversary release, Disney reverted to the original soundtrack from 1940, which they cleaned up as well as possible, although the limited fidelity could not be corrected, and this is the soundtrack the film has today. James Wong Howe served as cinematographer for the live-action segments uncredited. Originally, Gabriel Pierre Nace Cydalis? Cydalis? Sure. Cydalis was to have been the musical choice for the Greek mythology setting. But Walt Disney decided it wasn't expressive enough for the story, so Ludwig von Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony was chosen instead. Before Leopold Stokowski agreed to conduct the music for the film, Arturo Toscanini was considered a conductor. In the 1990s book Fantasia, John Colhane describes how he was told that members of the Disney staff were busy listening to a 78 RPM album of Toscanini conducting The Sorcerer's Apprentice, but quickly hid it when they heard that Stokowski was actually on his way to the studio. The static title card was originally shown at the film's midway point instead of at the beginning to introduce a 15-minute intermission used in the Roadshow release. The Fantasia title would remain projected on the house curtains until the beginning of the film's second act. Subsequent edit re-releases of the film shifted the title card from its intermission to its actual beginning, but for the 2000 DVD restoration, the title card is returned to the original midway point and even includes the RKO Rodeo Radio Pictures distribution credit. The first film to be presented to the general public in full digital sound. In February 1985, the digitally re-recorded soundtrack premiered at the Plit Century Plaza Theater in Century City, Los Angeles. The theater was equipped with a digital-ready HPS 4000 sound system and had the acoustic power equivalent to 10 symphony orchestras. Unused cell prints exist of the pastor's pastoral symphony sequence during the bathing scene, scene in the brook, which shows the female centaurs are bare-breasted while they wash themselves. Bella Lugosi modeled as the Disney Studios at the Disney Studios for the design of Chernobog, the demon in the in the Night on Bald Mountain sequence. He was captured in miscellaneous evil demon-like poses. The animators clearly based this character on Bela Lugosi's traits, expressions, mannerisms, and acting. There later was denial controversy on the part of one animator who would go on to claim that Lugosi wasn't used in the final product. However, photos have recently surfaced which prove that Bela Lugosi was obviously the one who, who whose modeling and acting ended up being used on film to create the passion and zeal of Demon Chernabog. The cartoon Demon's facial expressions are definitely borrowed from Bela Lugosi as well as his Dracula-like hand poses. Animator Wilfred Jackson was later brought into the supplement with more defined clinical poses without emotion. He merely provided simple lines for, me, for more streamlined drawing. Example, arms stretched out, arms straight down. But Lugosi was the one who did provide the facial expressions and the devil-like heart and soul acting for Chernabog. After initially considering and then rejecting the suggestion that Dopey from The Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937, would be the star of what he saw as the ultimate silly symphony, Walt Disney decided that his favorite Mickey Mouse, a character whose feature on the silver screen was a prime concern for Walt, would play the key role in an animated special featuring the music Le Apprenti Sorci. The Sorcerer's Apprentice by French composer Paul Ducas instead. In June 2008, it was ranked number five on the American Film Institute's list of the 10 greatest films in the genre animation. Early story treatments for The Rite of Spring extended the timeline to the evolutionary appearance of humans and the discovery of fire. However, creations threatened to cause trouble for the film if it was included. That, along with the other factors, resulted in the segment being cut to what is shown in the film. The soundtrack album, a 3LP set of all the music used in the film, was not released until 1957. In 1990, the conjunction with the film's 50th anniversary restoration, it was released on CD. The soundtrack for the 1982 version, newly recorded in digital sound and conducted by Erwin Kossel instead of Leopold Stokowski, had already been released on CD but was soon deleted in favor of the Stokowski version. The lifting of the eyebrow that Yen Sid does when Angry is attributed to the animators basing him partly on Walt Disney. 
The animators of Fantasia were, primar were familiar with his particular movement of Walt because it was part of the dirty look he gave them when he was unsatisfied with their work. The first major Hollywood film to be released with no written credits appearing on screen except the intermission title card. On the 1982 digital re-recording of the soundtrack, Erwin Kostel decided to use Modest Musorgiski's original orchestration, which was previously unpublished until 1968 of Night on Bald Mountain, which is said to be much fiercer than the version orchestrated by Leopold Stokowski that was used in the original. In the Nutcracker suite, considerable live-action footage was shot of Joyce Coles and Marge Champion, who was as Marjorie Belcher had modeled for Snow White. In long ballet skirts to, stim to stimulate the movements of the blossoms for the dance of the reed floats, flutes. For the same segment, Walt insisted that his effects technicians devised a way of transferring Elmer Plummer's an art teacher at the Chouinard Art Institute pre preliminary drawings to, anima to animation. After various attempts were rejected, they finally came up with stippled cells on which the painted characters had a delicate pastel-like look. Despite its reputation as one of Disney's biggest box office flops, subsequent re-releases have made the film a hit in its own right. As of 2012, it has grossed $76.4 million in domestic U.S. revenue alone. For the ostriches and alligators in The Dance of the Hours and The Demons in the Night on Bald Mountain number, Walt Disney hired the ballet Ruse de Monte Carlo as live-action reference models. Among the dancers who posed for the animation, animators, Leonid Messine, Tamara Tamanova, Alexandra Danilova, Irina Baranova, Frederick Frenulin, Nat Nataline Karasovska, Mil Milada Mladova, Sid Charisse, and Mark Platt. I told y'all there was going to be some names in there that would give me a minute, so thank you for bearing with me. Steve Holloway recorded narration for The Sorcerer's Apprentice before the idea was scrapped. He later lent his voice for the Peter and the Wolf sequence in the Fantasia-esque film Make My Music 1946. Both tracks are featured on the 2015 Legacy Collection soundtrack of this film. The introduction to the Rite of Spring attributes the extinction of the dinosaurs to a gigantic Dust Bowl event. The term Dust Bowl was more familiar to the original audience of the film than to the modern one. It was coined to describe a period of severe dust storms in the 1930s caused by severe drought and wind erosion in the North American area of the Great Plains. The weather event started in 1930 and continued until 1939, a year before the release of the film. Animator John Hench was assigned to work on the Dance of the Hour segment, but resisted as he knew little about ballet. Walt Disney then gave Hench season tickets to the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo with backstage access so he could learn more about it. The name of the dancing hippo in the Dance of the Hour segment is Hyacinth. Hyacinth. The ostrich is Miss Opanova, and the alligator is Ben Alligator. The music for The Sorcerer's Apprentice was the only piece that was not recorded by the Philadelphia Orchestra. It was recorded by a hand-picked orchestra on a sh shooting stage, that had been configured as a recording stage at the Pathé Studios in Culver City, later the RKO Pathé Studios, Desilu Studios, and now the Culver Studios, part of Sony Pictures Entertainment, sometime around 1938 to 1939. The rest of the music was recorded in Philadelphia by the Philadelphia Orchestra. The 1947 re-release was distributed with Peter and the Wolf, 1946, which was originally a segment in Make My Music, 1946 shown as a feature at much the way the first two or three Disney Winnie the Pooh shorts were shown for the main feature in theaters. This was the closest Walt Disney ever got to continuously updating Fantasia, with new segments although the Peter and the Wolf cartoon was not actually incorporated into Fantasia. The main theme in Dance of the Hours is adopted from the opera La Giosonda, composed by Emilia Carr Poncielli, 1834-86. This theme can also be heard in the song Hello Mudda, Hello Fada, A Letter from Camp, sung by radio comic Alan Sherman, 1924-73. to this was, not, this was also not the first time that the music was heard in a Disney film. 
It was previously heard in the 1929 Philly Symphony cartoon Springtime, 1929. Premiered at the Broadway Theater at 1681 Broadway at 53rd Street, New York, New York, 10019. Chernobog was referred to as Yen Sid in the pencil test for the Night on Bald Mountain sequence. Eventually, Yen Sid was used as the name of Mickey Mouse's magic teacher in the Sorcerer's Apprentice scene in the film. The animation of both characters were supervised by Bill Titia. All prints made between 1941 to 56 were remixed in mono, mono ural sound. The stereo was not restored until 1956 re-release. Keeping the tradition of Fantasia being a stereophonic sound revolution at the time of its original release, Disney has always reissued the film in the latest theatrical surround sound system at the time of each reissue since 1956. Optical Stereophonic Sound 1956, Digital Re-Recording of the Soundtrack, Dolby Stereo Reissue 1981-82, Restored Fantasound Dolby Stereo Reissue 1990. For home theater systems, Dolby Set Surround 3-4 Channel Sound VHS 1991, Dolby Digital 5.1 Sound DVD 2000, and DTS 7.1 Channel Sound Blu-ray Disc 2010. There has never been a re-release in theatrical Dolby Digital or DTS sound because the movie was released solely for the home video market since its VHS release. The Sorcerer's Apprentice segment is, the built, on, is built upon the Sorcerer's Apprentice 1897 by Paul Dukas, 1865 to 1935, which is a tone poem based on the story The Sorcerer's Apprentice 1797 by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, 1749 to 1832. Both Dukas Lucas and Disney's ad adaptations closely follow the plot of Goeth's original story. Composer Gunther Schuller, 1925-2015, was first introduced to Rite of Spring, 1913, by viewing the film. He cited it as a key moment in his life and an influence on his musical career. He believed that the same was likely true for other musical professionals. In his words, I hope Igor Stravinsky appeared, appreciated that hundreds, perhaps thousands of musicians were turned on to the Rite of Spring through Fantasia musicians who might otherwise never have heard the work. To gain a better understanding of the history of the planet, the studio received guidance from Roy Chapman Andrews, the director of the American Museum of Natural History, English biologist Julian Huxley, paleontologist Barnum Brown, and astronomer Edwin Hubble. Animator study comments and nebula comets and nebulas at the Mount Wilson Observatory and observed a herd of iguanas and a baby alligator that were brought into the studio. The camera was kept at a low position throughout the segment to heighten the immensity of the dinosaurs. Over 1,000 artists and technicians were used in the making of the film, which features more than 500 animated characters. According to R.D. Fields, the art of Walt Disney, in order to draw Hyacinth, the hippo, prima ballerina, a woman weighing over 200 pounds, 91 kilograms, was brought onto the live action stage and her movements were recorded by cameramen, recording the least quiver of her flesh, noticing those parts of her anatomy that were subjected to the greatest stress and strain. The movie was named as one of the 20 most overrated movies of all time by Premiere magazine. Mm -hmm. Besides Fantasia and a few comic book stories, the character Yen Sid rarely appeared in Disney media. In more recent years, this has changed. He had several appearances in the television series House of Mouse, Mouse 2001 and its spin-off film Mickey's Magical Christmas Snowden at the House of Mouse 2001, had more prominent roles in the video game series Kingdom Hearts 2002 and Epic Mickey 2010. Served as a godlike creator of worlds in the video games Fantasia Music Evolve 2014 and Disney Magical World 2013, and had a role in the novel Descendants Isle of the Lost 2015. One element in the Rite of Spring segment which is often overlooked is that none of the dinosaurs and other animals are anthropomorphic facial expressions or emotions. This was an unusual product from the Disney Studios which specialized in anthropomorphic animals. The breaking with the studio traditions was intentional, however. Walt Disney aimed to have the depiction of prehistoric animals as realistic as possible. For the Rite of Spring and its depictions of prehistoric animals, Walt Disney and his staff consulted experts. Paleontologist Roy Chapman Andrews, 1884-1960, to who became famous in the 1920s 
for discovering several previously unknown species of dinosaurs, such as the Protoceratops and Velociraptor, and uncovered the first nests full of dinosaur eggs. Paleontologist Barnum Brown, 1873 to 1963, who discovered the first known remains of Tyrannosaurus rex. Evolutionary biologist Julian Huxley, 1887 to 1975, expert in zoology, biology, and taxonomy. Not a success when first released as the outbreak of war in Europe cut off about 40% of its potential revenue. This film was selected into the National Film Registry in 1990 for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. It was the first animated feature film from the 1940s to be preserved. A segment featuring Claude Debussy's Claire de Lune was animated and intended as part of the original release but was cut due to the film's already excessive length. Claire de Lune was reworked and re-scored as the Blue Bayou sequence in Make My Music 1946. A restored version of the original Claire de Lune sequence released in the 1990s as a standalone short can be found on the Fantasia Legacy Supplemental DVD. The framing Leopold Sikowski footage for the segment could not be found, however, so the sequence is framed by recycling footage from the Tokata and Fubu segment. Fantasia is the first animated feature film to prominently feature non-avian dinosaurs. The character Sunflower from the Pastoral Symphony is a minor but rather famous character in this film. Sunflower is a centaurette, female centaur, who is depicted as being a hybrid of a young black African girl and a donkey. She is shown performing duties such as servant and beautician to the other centaurettes. In the 1960s, there was controversy that the character represented a racist and negative depiction of black people, including both her design and her subservient role in the film. Reacting to the controversy, Disney deleted her scenes from the film in 1969. In 1990, the scenes were restored, but the shots evol involving Sunflower were cropped so that she could not be seen, which has remained true for all subsequent releases. However, the unedited scenes were preserved in old tapes and circulated among those interested in the character and her depiction. These scenes are widely available on the internet with a few articles and pages devoted to analyzing them. Sunflower and her depiction have also been discussed and published works by film critics and scholars specializing in the depiction of minorities in film and animation. Despite Disney's efforts to de-emphasize her, Sunflower has more of a presence in public consciousness than most other characters from the same film. Despite her reputation as a racist character and Disney's attempts to de-emphasize her, Sunflower, the African centaurette featured in the film, has gained a considerable fan following on the internet. She is also featured prominently in fan art. While her design from the 1940s is considered dated, several artists and fan artists have created images where she is redesigned according to more modern concepts of African and African American girls. A UCLA athlete provided visual live action references for Mickey Mouse running around trying to step numerous, stop numerous brooms. The film opened at the Broadway Theater in New York City. Tickets were charged at higher rate because it was such a prestige production and to cover some of the costs of converting the theater to stereophonic sound. Ticket demand was so high that the extra telephone operators were hired to cope with the number of calls. The film ran for a recorded record-breaking 57 weeks. The Ride of Spring segment would have been of great interest to 1940 audiences as the discovery of dinosaur bones and the theories of their evolution and demise were all recent developments. Selected by the Vatican in the art category of its list of 45 great films. The first feature film to be shown in multi-channel sound. The original prints featured soundtracks that were recorded in a process known as Fantasia, Fantasound. A four-track directional stereophonic system that was invented especially to record the soundtrack for the film by RCA and the Walt Disney Studios technical team led by William E. Garrity. The Leopold Stokowski conducted orchestra audio was recorded one onto eight separate soundtracks. Six channels recorded individual sections of the orchestra. The seventh recorded a mix of the first six channels, and the eighth recorded a distant, distant pickup of the entire orchestra, which were then mixed down to three tracks, left, center, and right. The three music tracks were optically matted with a fourth control track containing signal tones that varied the speaker dynamics. 
onto a film strip separate from the projector print. Over 90 speakers were used for the playback of the Fantasound audio during the premiere of the film on 12th of November 1940. A more typical Fantasound setup used three speakers behind the screen and 65 others placed around the other three walls of the theater. However, Fantasound was discontinued due to the amount of sound equipment required and the time necessary to make installation. The advent of art time conditions also precluded the possibility of developing mobile units that could have lessened installation time and costs. Therefore, only 12 venues ever played the original Fantasound version of the film and only 16 Fantasound equipped prints were ever created. When RKO took over distrib distribution for the show Roadshow version on, in January 1941, the film was shipped with a conventional monorails mono track. Disney technicians recreated Fantasound for the 50th anniversary release in 1990 using modern digital technology and the original sound cues from the Disney archives and this mix was encoded into the subsequent VHS and Laserdisc releases. This mix is active and even aggressive at times, with music swirling or jumping around the room. However, the DVD's mix sounds considerably different. While no official verification can be found that it was changed, the DVD's surround mix is more passive, with the music in the front channels and only concert hall reverb in the rear channels. The sound is cleaner but is not Fantasound as it was described in 1940 as it appeared in 1990. Since the name of Yen Sid is not spoken in Fantasia, it remained dis obscure for years. A 1971 episode of The Magical World of Disney, 1954, called him Merlin, which is the name of another Disney character, the sorcerer from the, from the Sword in the Stone, 1963. Yen Sid's role as the mentor of the sorcerer's apprentice served as the inspiration of the magical mentor character Balthazar Blake from the Disney live-action film The Sorcerer's Apprentice, 2010. The Pastoral Symphony segment uses both the music of the 1808 original work by Ludwig von Beethoven, 1770-1827, and the basic story structure he had in mind for the work. Per Beethoven's instructions, the work opens with an awakening of cheerful feelings on arrival in the countryside. It continues with a scene by the brook with an initial motif that clearly imitates flowing water, which is the followed, which is then followed by another motif that imitates bird calls. The third section of this work represents a merry gathering of country folks, followed by the fourth section, which represents a violent thunderstorm. The fifth and final section of the work represents happy and thankful feelings after the storm. The Pastoral Symphony segment and its characters were based on Greco-Roman mythology. It makes Fantasia the first animated feature film to use classical mythology as a source instead of fairy tales and more recent literature. Bacchus, the deity depicted in the Pastoral Symphony, uses the Roman name for the Greek god Dionysus. Under the name Dionysus, the name character's character appears in minor roles in Hercules 1997 and in, a, and in a major role in the few episodes of the spin-off television series Hercules 1998. While most of the centaurettes were unnamed in official Disney publications relating to this film, the official draft of the scenes did assign names to them. The names were used to help the animators working on them distinguish one from the other. The names in order of appearance in the draft were Sandra, Hilda, Melinda, Judy, and Cabina. Melinda was the only name to survive in official publications about the film. It was assigned to the centaurette with the pale blue body and yellow hair and pigtails who receives her own scene. She is depicted sadly sitting under a tree having been the only centaurette who failed to pair up with a centaur. The Cupid's playing matchmaker the Cupid's play matchmaker and hook her up with Brutus, a male centaur with blue pale blue skin who was also sad and lonely. In the 1998, the American Film Institute released a list called the AFI's 100 Years, 100 Movies, choosing the 100 best American feature films. Fantasia made the list and was ranked 58th. The AFI's criteria for inclusion and ranking were that a film has to have a feature length and a narrative format, to be an American production or co-production, to have received critical recognition, to have won major awards, to have gained popularity and commercial success over the years, to have gained historical significance through innovations, and to have had a cultural impact on American society. While the Pastoral Symphony segment depicts multiple male centaurs, 
Only Brutus receives much screen time and appears in multiple scenes. He is also the only one of them who has received an individual name. The West Coast premiere at the Carthay Circle Theatre was a grand affair, attracting some 5,000 people, including Shirley Temple, Cecil B. DeMille, Forrest Tucker, James Cogney, Robert Montgomery, James Murphy, Edgar Bergen, and many other notables in the film industry. The film was originally known as the Concert Feature or Musical Feature. Hal Horn, a publicist for Disney's film distributor, Arkea Radio Pictures, wished for a different title and gave the suggestion Philharmonic Concert. Stuart Buchanan then held a contest at the studio for a title that produced almost 1,800 suggestions, including Bach to, Stroven to Stravinsky and Bach and Hybrowski by Stravinsky. Ostakowski. Still the favorite among the film's supervisors was Fantasia, an early working title that had even grown on horn. It isn't the word alone, but the meaning we read into it. Leopold Stokowski was so intrigued by Walt Disney's vision for setting classical music to a Mickey Mouse short that he agreed to conduct the orchestra for free. As the film ballooned into something more ambitious, Stokowski signed an 18-month contract with the studio for the film's production. The Rite of Spring segment was actually shown in many schools for years as a way of educating children about evolution. Included among the American Film Institute's 1998 list of the top 100 greatest American movies. Included among the 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, edited by Steven Schneider. This is the first of two Disney animated feature films to feature centaurs among the cast. The other is Hercules 1979, which includes the centaur Nessus as a minor villain. The idea to combine Leopold Stokowski's orchestration of Toccata and Fugu in D minor with abstract animations is credited to Oscar Fischinger, 1900-67. Fischinger was an animator who specialized in the abstract. He was the one who designed the relevant sequence in Fantasia but never received credit for it. While the film was still produced, he quit the Disney studio in protest, while Disney had decided to alter the original designs of the artist to be more representational. When the film was released, the designs had been rendered semi-abstract. For inspiration on the routines in Dance of the Hours, animators studied real-life ballet performers including Marge Champion and Irina Baranova. From the beginning of its development, Walt Disney expressed the greater importance of music in Fantasia compared to his own work. In our ordinary stuff, our music is always under action. But on this, we're supposed to be picturing this music, not this music, not the music fitting our story. Disney had hoped that the film would bring classical music to people that, including himself, had walked out on this kind of stuff. The Mickey Mouse Searcher's Apprentice was originally conceived as a Philly Symphony short. As the short's production costs spiraled, the decision was made to make it part of a compendium movie compromised of other shorts all set to classical music. Disney's third animated feature. Some of the dances in Fantasia, which are used to accompany the Nutcracker Suite 1892, are inspired by characters appearing in the ballet of the Nutcracker 1892, including the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, which is named after a specific character. The sorcerer Jens is a silent character in this film. Several of his subsequent roles were also silent or with little dialogue. He never received a regular or with little he never received a regular voice actor until the release of the video game Kingdom Hearts 2 2005, where he was voiced by Corey Burton. Burton has since voiced all major appearances of Yen Sid. RKO was originally supposed to release the film, but not balked at the idea of two-hour-plus classical music feature. Disney released the film themselves through the select number of roadshow theaters. RKO would later take on the film for its re-releasing, but usually with mono sound forming part of a double feature with The Western Valley of the Sun, 1942. The Rite of Spring segment contains subtle reminders of the concept of a food chain and that predators can also be prey. The first scene to depict this involves a pteranodon. He hunts for food and manages to catch a fish, being the predator. Then he becomes the prey of a massasaur and is killed. Bacchus is depicted in the Pastoral Symphony as a drunk figure who constantly dr drinks wine. This is a humorous depiction of the ancient deity's Dionysus Bacchus association with wine. He was the god of the grape harvest, wine making, and wine. 
He was, however, also associated with other aspects of ancient life, including the patron deity of theater. While the film depicts numerous prehistoric species, only the Tyrannosaurus rex is actually named by Deems Taylor. While the character Mickey Mouse plays in The Sorcerer's Apprentice is based on an unnamed Sorcerer Apprentice in the, in the 1797 original story and inherits his characterization, The Sorcerer Against It is more of an original Disney creation. In the original story, the unnamed Sorcerer appears only at the finale, rescues his apprentice from the out-of-control magical objects, and speaks only two lines. Then the original story ends abruptly, with no time for the sorcerer to react to his apprentice's misuse of magic and the cons consequent mess. The sorcerer receives no physical description and no real characterization. The Disney staff were free to decide what the sorcerer would look like and how would he react to Mickey's blunder. They created a stern-looking figure who was silently angry by the finale. Yancey's design closely resembles a later Disney character and has been suggested as a template for him. The character is Kashikim Nedok, King of Atlantis from Atlantis the Lost Empire 2001. Both characters are slender, elderly, with long white hair and beards, balding at the top, and are also dressed in robes. The centaur rich featured in the Pastoral Symphony segment are considered a peculiar innovation as female centaurs are not featured in ancient myths. Consequently, they were also a rare theme in art. However, the Disney idea has its own origins. Disney concept artist Albert Herder, 1883-1942, was seeking images of centaurs to use as references of Fantasia. He found rare images of female centaurs in the works of German artist Franz Stuck, 1863-1928. Stuck specialized in works inspired by mythology but interpreted it in unique ways. Some of his ideas were adopted by Herder. The studio filmed professional dancers Joyce Coles and Marjorie Belcher wearing ballet skirts that resembled shapes of blossoms that were to sit above water for dance of the flute. An Arabian dancer was also brought in to study the moves for the golden fish in Arab dance. Igor Stravinsky's The Firebird was originally considered for the Dinosaur Rite of Spring segment. This was later incorporated into Fantasia 2000, 1999. For the Pastoral Symphony segment, the Hayes office insisted that the female centaurs had garlands covering their bare breasts. Igor Stravinsky visited the Disney Studios during production and was shown sketches of the segment that would be set to his music. Stravinsky was very impressed at the, at the ambition of the project. One of at least three films to feature J.S. Box, Tilkata, and Fugu in D minor the others being 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, 1954, and Rollerball, 1975. The Sorcerer Yen Sid was adopted, adapted to the Disney comics in 1941. He has had relatively few appearances in comic books over the years. His most notable stories include a Little Bad Wolf story from 1951, an adaptation of The Sorcerer's Apprentice with an additional scenes from 1953, and Feathery Duck story from 1974. Another adaptation of The Sorcerer's Apprentice from 1991, a crossover story from 1993 where he battles Magicka Dispel and Mad Madam Mim, a crossover story from 2007 where he encounters Maleficent, the comic book adaptation of Epic Mickey from 2010, and a sequel to the Epic Mickey story from 2012. Ken Anderson, 1909-93, based some of his background designs for the Pastoral Symphony on the painting. Isle of the Dead by Arnold Bocklin, 1827-1901. Segments were color-keyed by scene by scene, so the colors in a single shot would harmonize between preceding and following ones. Before a segment's narrative pattern was complete, an overall color scheme was designed to the general mood of the music, and patterned to correspond with the development of the subject matter. The studio's character model department would also sculpt three-dimensional clay models so the animators could view their subjects from all angles. First Disney film dubbed in Spain with Castilian in Spanish, 1977. In the Magical World of Disney episode, The Plausible Impossible, Walt Disney introduces us to an edited version of the Night on Bald Mountain sequence from this film. During the introduction, he calls Chernabog the Prince of Darkness, Satan himself. So either Disney did not know his name was Chernabog and assumed it was Satan, or it was Satan and the Disney company gave him the name Chernabog later on as Satan is not a very good name for marketing reasons. The Disney Company owns a character called Fantasia. She is a Marvel comic book character introduced in 1989 and has also appeared under the name 
Phantasma. She is a sorceress, and her name might have chosen in reference to the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Like most Marvel characters, Fantasia is currently owned by Disney. The Pastoral Symphony makes the film this film one of two Disney animated feature films based on Greco-Roman mythology. The other is Hercules 1997. The two even share some characters. Since the Pastoral Symphony segment depicts a celebration in honor of Dionysus slash Bacchus, some sources suggest that it was Disney's own depiction of the Bacchanadia was the Roman festival to the gods by the and by the reputation used to involve sexual rituals. The term survives in the modern world, its current meaning being uninhibited or drunken revelry. The Pastoral Symphony was the most controversial segment of the film when it was released and still has its dis detractors. This decision to combine Ludwig von Beethoven's music with images and characters from Greco-Roman mythology was itself considered peculiar, but it was the depiction of the myths and general mood of the segment that was deemed inappropriate. It was considered to be too comical, too cute, too kitschy to take seriously. And finally, Walt Disney Animation Studios' first film to release in November. Later, since 2012, this would become the standard month in which Walt Disney Films Animation Studio film, in which each Walt Disney Animation Studios film in the future would release. With the exception of Home on the Range 2004, The Wild 2006, Meet the Robinsons 2007, Princess and the Frog 2009, Winnie the Pooh 2011, and Zootopia 2016. I think this is the longest fun fact video I've ever goddamn done. Thank you guys so much for watching, for sticking around through this. Those of you who clicked out of here before I was even done, good on you. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Bye little skeletons. Love you guys. Stay safe.